Hello everybody, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Today I am focusing strictly on settings that will make or break your game, both visually and performance wise, okay? So what we're doing here is I'm showing you all the settings that will make your game look good at the cost of performance or make your game look bad at the cost of visuals. This is a universal guide for everybody on any system playing this game. It doesn't matter what system you have, I am focusing on the settings and what the settings actually do in the game and why they are good or bad to use. All right. So one of the biggest complaints that you'll hear out there is that the game looks blurry in the distance and objects don't appear to be crispy. All right. So, if, the, if you want a crispy image that has less blurred edges, you have to focus on anti-aliasing and turning it up or down. Now, the reason for that is MSAA, FXAA, and TAA are all things that are anti-aliasing that will take away jagged lines. If you look at this image and you see around the spoilers, around the trunk lines of the red Ferrari, the white one by the brake light, left light at the bumper, you can clearly see jagged lines. But if you were to come in here and turn this up to 8, make sure FXAA is on, and top it up with extra effects and turn this temporal anti-aliasing on, it will become super smooth at the cost of performance and when you have high anti-aliasing and you have a high blur pixel rate and a high sample spread what happens is the game is trying to smooth things out so far in the distance there hasn't been enough detail to smooth yet and what you get is a blurred image in the distance so even though temporal anti-aliasing and MSAA and FXAA help to smooth the edges, you can turn these settings up too high to the point where you are making things in the distance blurry. So if you, and the other thing you want to change is depth of field and turn it off. If you do these things, personally I run 2x FXAA on and I leave TAA on with a 50% blur rate. That is the happy medium for me with my system. I have a good system, I can run that no problem, but most medium spec people can at least run 2 to 4x MSAA with FXAA on, and extra effects TAA is of course a personal preference. So the next thing we're going to talk about has to do with road details, track side objects, trees, road lines. If you have a problem with anything to do with the tracks not being detailed enough or the road lines not being seen far enough far enough down the road they get blurry what you're gonna do is turn up any anisotropic filtering this setting here combined with world details will be responsible for how good things look on the track we're talking trees curbs road lines you name it Whereas anisotropic filtering is just going to make them look better at a distance. So I always run 16 times to make the road immersive as the road can be. And I will turn down world details depending on what map I'm on to remove things like buildings, trees, and whatever else is included in the world details part of the config for that map. It should be noted, not every map is going to be affected by world details but if you want to see it in action try Shotoko Revival Project or LA Canyons and you'll really see how much this impacts uh, same with Nordschleife huge impact there <clears throat> on to the next thing all right shadow resolution if you have a low-end PC this is specifically for you guys I recommend to turn it off and play your game with pure installed running overcast weather and making the game pretty dark and cloudy and misty 
There's virtually no shadows in clouds and mist because the sun can't break through, so you can manipulate the game to make it look that way so you don't have to use shadows. That's what I would do on a low-end system. I would go no anti-aliasing, 16 times anisotropic, minimum details, off the shadows, off the smoke, and I would play in a foggy, misty, overcast day with lots of clouds and no shadows. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about here is the reflection resolution and the rendering frequency and distance. All of these is the higher the better quality and look, the lower the better performance. It's very straightforward. It's really really simple. If you just click on this thing it will show you a bunch of different things here. Even at 512 I'm getting a 6% performance hit at 6 faces per frame. Now let's see what happens here. 37%. All right. This is important to change to your liking and if you really have a low end system you're going to go on static 256 and you're just going to roll with that. That's what you're going to have to do. And if you have a low end system you're going to have to turn down your rendering distance. That's just how it is. That's what these things do. It's how far your rendering reflections in the game it matters a lot. Now for your overall quality and glare quality, unfortunately it's the same thing. Lower, better performance, higher, better quality. You will get ugly flickering lights that have glare with post-processing filters and stuff if you have your glare quality turned down. If you turn this down, your lights will start to have some flickering effects and it won't look as good or as smooth. I highly recommend that you just leave glare on maximum unless you really have a budget system then you can't get around it heat shimmering I always turn off because there are definitely bugs with lots of cars with heat shimmering so I never have heat shimmering on I don't use motion blur in a set of course of video because we want to use that in extra effects mirror resolution is also going to affect the quality of the headlights in your mirrors if you are running a high post-processing filter, you got a good PC, your graphics are nice, and you're still getting flickering headlights in your mirrors, you have to turn down mirror resolution or your CSP light emissive. As soon as CSP emissive lights get too bright in your config, they will start to flicker and change color. It is not a post-process filter problem. It's not a graphic config problem. It is a resolution lighting problem in the mirrors with the reflections and you just have to run a high mirror resolution if you want the lights to continue to look good in the mirror. I'm going to go ahead and lower this. I am going to share this uh, setting when we're done. Now the next thing that we need to know here is the LOD bias in the bottom right of a set of course of video. It says minus one to sharp the image. So if we go to the left, we get a sharper, more jagged, pointy image. And if we leave it at zero, we will have a more blurred image. If you were, say, on a 1440p monitor, you would turn it down to make it look sharper, and you would turn it back to zero to get it closer to being blurrier, like 1080p. It's a personal preference. I highly recommend you, you check it out. So hopefully this taught you enough about the Assetto Corsa video settings. I just wanted to go over what these settings kind of are doing and how they're affecting your game a bit and the things that you can definitely turn down on a low-end system and how to kind of manipulate the game on a low-end system. So at the end of the day, I'm going to share what I think would be decent for the AC video settings for the low system and that's going to be all of this stuff off very very minimum settings and what I'll do here is I'm going to save this now as low spec 2024 and I'm going to add that to my huge list of presets and then I'm going to go ahead and just take a quick little break and go ahead and continue on with CSP for low-end PCs and having the game still looking okay.
I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a couple things about these settings in AC video. And stay tuned for Content Manager CSP. That will be the next video. It will literally be up in about an hour after this one, I'm assuming. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Stay gaming.